police and the rest of them will be defensive too. Don't let them break into you. Wear masks, cover your face. Wear face masks to, to protect yourself against the canisters. Wear bulletproof vests under your shirts. All these things can be made. You can make some of them yourself. Get some of all those uh, weathers to make you, uh, to make you uh, very strong uh, steel plated, uh, you know, jackets. Okay. Put on some solid uh, ailments. Protect yourselves so that when they enter you, you enter them. Okay. As some of you are falling down, some of them are falling down too. And with that kind of a quad, and it's, see, protests are, in this regard, are more coordinated. So you don't go about and be sharing glucose boost, sharing uh, water, sharing this and uh, listening to DK music. That is not how you're going to deal with these guys. And that is where all of us in the diaspora comes in. These guys are not going to go down cheaply. They're not going to change. They're not going to fear. All right? They will do it again and do it again and again. You're never going to have an election in that contraption. You are never going to have one. And there are those who are going to make sure that that kind of idea stays. So you're going to run, you're going to do this, and they will come around and destroy your businesses, destroy your homes, kill you. Do you understand that? So if you want to go into any kind of arrangement, any, 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 sort of uh, piss off with them. You know that it is, it is when you say you want to come out that there are police and all of them will always have this uh, riot gears, all the weapons. But when there is crime going on that you needed the policemen, you won't see them. So don't join anybody that is calling for any protest. There's nothing called peaceful protest. Yes, don't try it. Oh. Obedience, because now I've been very good in mobilizing. Before you know it, now I don't mobilize in myself. Abuja, Water cut, Lagos, this and that. Eh, Tinumbu must go with your placard. Eh? Paper, 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 placard. You're just probably like trying to commit a suicide. And there's nobody that would listen to this because there's nobody that would be responsible. There's not going to be any United Nation. There's not going to be America. There's not going to be EU. EU. They will watch them kill you. Or if the EU and the rest of them sees that the policemen are running yeah. and they are, leaving their, they, are, they are leaving their weapons, they are leaving their vehicles, they are running away from you. They will begin to now say, okay, we need to do something about the crisis in Nigeria. We need to listen to the demand of this, this and that. And from that moment, you could actually end all these rogues without inviting any military. You will fight. And that is what is called implosion. So to those of us who are abroad, that is where we are going to come in. Eh? You see all the, the need for all that uh, bulletproof jackets, safety helmets, uh, you know, gas mask, and the other stuff to provide uh, you know, protections, uh, to provide in you know, other stuff. Eh? That is where we come in. The diaspora Nigerians remit more than a $40 billion to Nigeria every year. And as the economy continues to go uh, down and down and down, uh, more of us are now carrying the pressure of carrying, uh, you know, subsidizing our family members, loved ones who have fallen on the hard times of, of created by these uh, rogues in Nigeria. A lot of us are facing this pressure too. And any relief for them is a relief for us too, that we can actually face our lives for real. And I'm just trying to be real here. We have many of us who have spent almost like 40, 50 years abroad. Some have had properties built in that place, but they can't go back there because it is so unsafe. And right now that is hitting deep on their own health as we speak at the age of 67, Six, excuse me, 60, 70. They are still in the cold abroad, but they can't go back to a place where they could get killed any moment from now. So we can use the percentage of that our remittances to help you. We are not meant to come back and uh, join you, no. Okay? You are the direct victims. And if you are waiting for somebody who has already escaped all of this malady, all this madness, to come back and then uh, lead you before you will think you deserve a better life, then it's better you die in your misery and poverty then. 
Don't you think so? Like I am here. I don't have any experience of police brutality. Eh? Quack doctors in your healthcare uh, facilities. I do not live inside the contraption where anything can happen to me, just it, as it is happening to a lot of people, as it can happen to you. I'm not living there. You are closer to the danger than myself. So if you are not motivated enough to want to avoid that danger, why don't you just die? Isn't, it, isn't that better? Now, to those who probably don't want to choose that uh, faith, yes, this is where the diasporans will come in. We will roll in the enough, uh, what do you call it, enough support that could actually procure you all of that. There must be that, uh, yeah, there must be that willingness of, you know, courage that you really want to do it. Because you will be pushed to do that. And that's where we'll come in. That is where some of our support will come in cash and in kind, as well as the uh, international publicity to whatever it is that is going on inside Nigeria. That is where we come in. And that kind of role is so valuable. That is going to be the lifeline of what could be the, the liberation, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, revolution, so to say. But until we get to that, we believe that a citizen or a population that want to uh, stage a revolution or fight to break away from those who believe they have already captured you. Eh? So that revolution has to be something that is spontaneous. It must be something you want. And we will see it the moment you want it. Mm -hmm. We will. So don't join anybody that says, let us go and, uh, I'm going to, I think I have a caller. Well, that took a while, but I'll take it. Hello there. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Michael. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I agree. I'm fine, sir. And you? I'm very well, oh, thank you. Okay. I greet everybody of the Temple of Truth. Uh, thank you for this uh, afternoon, afternoon uh, relaxation, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, my, I, I, want to, I want to simply ask a question. Right. As a Christian, as a Christian in Nigeria, as of today, in Nigeria of today, mm -hmm. do you mean if that person, like a, a, a poor Christian, I'm not talking about this elite Christian, a real hardcore poor Christian, that's very, very poor, without this crisis of uh, this uh, administration, you maybe cannot even afford to eat mass in a day. Are you telling me that if such a Christian dies, maybe he's not still doing the will of God, will he go to hellfire after the one he will face from Nigeria? Ah, well, my own understanding of uh, hellfire uh, is going to be like what they did. It doesn't matter whether they were poor or rich. Sure, you get. Uh -huh. My own understanding of it is like uh, what they did. And of course, yes, they will still go because we are all seeing the suffering that people are facing here, right? Imagine somebody that is now justifying that, somebody who is poor, but still justifies that. Do you think that person will go to heaven? Because they are lying. They are misrepresenting the truth. You know? They are calling black white. Whether they die poor, wretched, I think they will still go to the empire. Even myself, I will argue I'm when I get to heaven. Okay, because, uh, because you know, there is, there is a concept of like, you know, uh, People have not been awakened from their sleep. Because you cannot expect somebody who came to colonize me, sold me Christianity, and said my riches are in heaven. But he's making his own country look like heaven with my resources. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this, how it works. You know, so you came to me and said, oh. Did I don't know. Did I just stop that? Okay. Huh? Can you see me a bit? I can hear you. All I right. can hear you. Sorry, my, my table just got uh, knocked off uh, there. So, uh, what was that your question again? Sorry, I just missed that. I said, I said, I said the colonizer came to me, yeah. told me Christianity, told me I should be praying that my resources, I will get them in heaven. So I can suffer, I can die, I can, I should, I should take all the poverty, take all the shit. Good. But now, my, you know, my riches are in heaven. But, but, but it's in my country, taking my gold, taking my oil, making his own place better. That is what, I, now I remember what I wanted to say, okay? Uh, you know something here is that, Baba? You see this our mind, eh? 
it's such a very, very powerful tool, okay, that it can, whatever it can conjure and believe, eh, it's so strong that it will take more stronger belief to unbelieve that. So what they did with our mind is this. They said, if you don't use your mind, which is your brain, uh, somebody else will use it. So what happened is that our people know what they are doing. I will say that as well, okay? You see the promise of heaven and air and all of that stuff. For those who believe them, uh, let me try me somehow, right? Uh, yeah. It is, it is, it is more kind of a different from the reality of say, I, I am poor. But this person who came to colonize me said, my poverty is good. Okay, and in fact, I should be happy that I am poor because God loves the poor people. And if I die poor and righteous, I will go to heaven. And then in that heaven, I will now have everything. Somehow, yeah. Those who believe that, in a way, eh, to me, uh, it yeah. is you know, it it is like when you when you suspend your mind, because you know religion generally, Baba, religion, eh, you are not supposed to be yeah. critical or I'm a critical thinker. You're just to believe exactly. and follow it, okay? So, mm. but in the in the, in the case of uh, people we see in this reality of today, this world today. Well, your question, which is we are not our own old parents or others like that, like the ancient people who believed them, by the way, right? But in our own case, you can ask that question and be like, hang on. If my colonizer says poverty is good, it makes me righteous and all of that, love of money is evil, is the source of evil, and all of that stuff. But my colonizer has all the fine things. They have everything. Even you are going too far. My pastor has everything. All good things. Things that ordinarily are supposed to be worldly things. So yes. no matter no you, you will never fall for such. I mean, you question it. Okay? You question it. And when you say, uh, my pastor, I don't mean to be rude, though. The Bible says that uh, we are all going to be rich and prosperous in this uh, house and all that. But in reality, it's pretty much like this is just a business for you because we are all poor right here and all of that stuff. So I don't know how that will go with a lot of people, but it is pure, pure brainwashing. Call it that way. Uh, and that, it. and um, my, own, my own, that is why, that is one of the concepts why, you see, the religion issue, especially in Nigeria, is going very rapid. It's, it's going very it fast. Like, it's, it's, it's like a boom. Gone, it's, 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 going. It's, like, it's like a it's, okay. It is a, it's like a booming business. Instead of us to be industrializing, instead of us to be growing up, uh, you know, with thinking about you know developing ourselves. But you see the way the Christianity is spreading. It is spreading. It's like it's captivating, carrying everybody along. And it, but the people are still where they are. But the, the religion issue is developing because it is like a it's like a seed that was like that is planted, and according to the colonizer, it's going the way they want it to go amongst us, so that we forget entirely our our reason to be Africa, I know. or have what we have. Because how can you just look at Nigeria for example? It's like a, it's like a, a slave colony whereby the master will say everybody go to work, everybody will go and work. Look at what the CBN is doing. Look at what they are doing with our money. Look at what they. Imagine now you are levying us on our money that will transfer, but you know the people who embezzled the money in the past administration, you cannot bring them to books. It's okay, we'll bring the ones that is left from you, even though you cannot bring everything. Let just let us just have the one you, 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 you stole, the remaining one. Nobody's asking that, but instead, on the detriment of the people, you are asking them, you are asking for somebody taking 30,000 naira as minimum wage. Maybe that 30,000 naira, sometimes they will even pay him once in six months. And you want to still levy that person by the time the person make a transfer from that person. What would you do with that? It is so. See, now, now poverty. You see, what religion does, religion takes advantage of poor people. And that is why when you see religious people, they want to make people poorer. 
but by promising them poverty, I mean, sorry, promising them prosperity, promising them life after death, heaven, and stuff like that. There are some other ones who believe that if they die killing people in the name of Allah, they will get 72 virgins. Now, look at this. So, someone somewhere uh, who probably is uh, a they will call them uh, they will call them monk being being con they shall have you know this uh, arab these guys right so one uh, pedo one, one pedophile possibly a rapist eh? uh, a narcissistic fellow who can uh, recite arabic he started to come out to brainwash millions of young people because it's not new now it's been like that forever i'll change you know so millions if not billions of uh, young people that is fantasy for women. Listen to the description of the virgins. So, according to them, they said you will have a seventy-two virgins. They are going to have the most beautiful breast. They're going to have the most beautiful ass, and they will not be menstruating, so that you will not be have to worry that they are taking a break from sex from you. They will not menstruate. No period. Okay, and they will not. They will never grow old. They will look like. You know, young young girls like 15 years. That's why he described the virgin in heaven. He said they will look like 15 years, okay. And they, you as a man, okay, you will never. I mean, sorry, you will never. Uh, I mean, you will be like a horse. He said you will be like a horse. God will give you a very long, longer dick, and uh, you can last for five hours, six hours. There's no 24 hours in heaven. Everything is just the same. All right? Now, this is a fantasy of a, of a lunatic. And you know something? A lot of them believe it. Those who could be brainwashed. Right? And everywhere you go, they will say, oh, 72 virgins. 72 virgins. Guess what he promised the women? He said the women, they will meet all the men with the longest dick. They will meet the men with the longest stamina, the stamina of a horse. So if you are a woman eh, that goes to heaven, you will see a man that never tires. Is that not a fantasy of somebody who is a sex addict? Eh, who can read Quran? Um, and then decided to now teach it to people and say, kill people who will give you 72, 72 of those women in heaven. He described the women. He described them in total. Baba, in total, Ma things that they don't like about women, they don't want people to see. He said, no, God will put a special one there. God will put a special one here. This one is this and that. But people didn't see a sick man. They thought they saw a prophet uh, or a, 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 somebody, a preacher from Saudi. You see, Mayegu is, is the concept of, of a poor man. In Africa, look at most people who are poor. What do they do? So you find them having more children because, no, because the idea, the psychological idea, the, 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 the idea when when the man is like is 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 worthless, he doesn't have a future, he doesn't have he doesn't have anything he thinks about. The, the only thing he thinks about is sex. Yeah. So when you put that one as a concept, you see that the 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 idle mind will quickly grab that. Yeah, and say, no, oh, the idea. Is it, eh? Do you mean I'm going to see all these so, big bomb bomb forever? Uh -huh. You see, you, see, you, see, you, see, you see the same thing. the same thing like telling somebody who's a Christian to sit down. Your riches are in heaven. Yeah. Then somebody will come to my house, drive me away, kick me out, take the resources they find in my father's compound. I will be, I will be kneeling down in somewhere and be praying that God lend my resources in heaven. Let it be, let it be let me for me when I get heaven, That is described for the Christians too. Let me describe that one for you. That poor man loves so much. All right, even rich man want to experience it. So he start to do a philanthropy after stealing from the public, eh? Or possibly committing other different crimes against humanity. Or at the end of the day, he wants to go to heaven. So start giving money to people, philanthropists, okay? Let me describe what they said that heaven is. In heaven, there will be no work. You will not work. The garden, okay. the angels are there in the garden. Everything you want is there. Food, drink. You will see the angels. They will be singing the praises of God every day. And you will join them. That is how heaven is. What does that tell you? Oh, don't worry. You are poor, Abby. And you are working right now. You don't have much. Oh, when you get to heaven, eh? You don't have to work again. 
You just have to clean. I cannot. You'll just be flowing in white gown and you'll be eating for free. Okay? You'll be for free like that mm. until the day of judgment and God will now call the deception. All these sins were the decision they gave to poor people to keep them poorer and controlled. Never to be ambitious to challenge your oppressors. I get the two of them, but a lot of them will disagree with me. And uh, that's fine. My ego, is, mm -hmm. my ego is going to be very... Africa is, go, is, is going to be very, very tough. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we are going to tear up. We are going to fight with our last day. It might not even be this our generation. Mm -hmm. It might be that the, it will start from us. The fight will start from us. We will pass it on to the second people. The second people will pass it on this before it starts getting better. This thing, eh? mm -hmm. you see... I have never understand. I have never understood the ways and the aims of the colonizer, of the white man, of the average white man. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Because if you go, if I, if, if as a black man, if you go back to history and even sit down to assimilate some books on what happened in Africa, if any, any, any if anybody from the West tell anything to you, you won't even want to die. You won't even want to buy because it, it, it is so horrific. I was listening to what is happening in Congo today. At the concept of Congo with the Belgium and everything. My brother, and those people who have died, who have suffered, and are still suffering today. Somebody will tell me some of those people will not make heaven because maybe they are not Christian, they are not Muslim, who thought they are passing through today. Mm -hmm. Does that not tell you that something is wrong somewhere? It's a deceit, but it's a thing of faith. They will tell you. So I don't I don't really want people to feel bad about their faith. But sometimes logically, religion is not to make is religion, right? It's something that is not meant to make sense. Okay. You are not supposed to like it will it, because if you begin to try to want to make sense out of religion, right? Religion will look stupid to you. And that's insulting to my, religious people. My 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 God, God himself has created us as he he like like as the Christian would say. Because that is born today, when it starts growing up, there will, there will be some, when it starts growing, there will be some certain, maybe at the age of six months or four months, when you do, make some certain noise around where the child is, the child will, sh it, it, it will shiver, it will shock. Mm -hmm. That it will assimilate that something danger, danger is coming. Nobody has told the child that there is a danger coming because there is something in things that That's controls. That is the definition knows. of a human being. Mm -hmm. Something is already there to tell you that this is wrong and this is right. I think I think that one should be the way of life as a normal human being because in Africa, even we though before the white man came, there, mm -hmm. there is nobody in Africa, even though you are not a Christian, you know, that will tell you to go and sleep with another man's wife that is a good thing. You know? Even though you are not a Christian, you're not the Muslim. You 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 you, you should you should know that, that no 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 this exactly. is not morally. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's in you. It's in you as a person. You don't need somebody to tell you that I should go and see my ego's car, and if my ego see me, will be happy with me. You don't need me, you don't, you don't need to put mm. that. That is the way of life. You know what they are doing, Sean. We should always, always tell ourselves. And that's why I hate the one where people will say, oh, now nah, the devil, oh, my brother, now nah, the devil, I don't even know what came over me. Oh, God, shut up, man. You know what came over you. You are just ashamed that you get yeah. caught. When you get caught, you feel like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what came over me. Come on. The man in book, I did it. Guys, I'm sorry. I, did, I didn't know. I didn't know uh, it was really going to be messed up that way. But I'm so sorry. That's it. Which one is uh, hey, now the devil? Oh. Hey, now the devil, oh, Baba. You know, say I can't do this kind of thing. Eh? You know me now. Shut up, man. I don't know you. Okay. So I wish uh, I wish us well. I wish us well, my even because whether we like it or not, yeah. Nigeria is going to end like the state of the animal farm. The novel. It's going to end like that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to end like the animal farm. So, but that you, you, there's no way you are going to take it because it's going to end like that. See, it is, it is either Nigeria break up soon, or you see this establishment that is holding Nigeria together is completely shattered, and a new, no, course, a new conversation no, no. will start. It's, something it's will give, and I strongly believe that uh, something is going to give. My, 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 hmm? Thank you for the time, oh, and you, God keep you strong for us. Please. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you for the time. You have a good one. Okay, enjoy your morning, Baba. So that's a good one there. You know, uh, if you are supporting evil, 